the feast of our lady of perpetual help the name our lady of perpetual help derives from one of the most famous of all pictures of mary an icon of the fourteenth century painted on walnut wood in crete from where it was thought to have been brought to rome by an italian merchant it was exposed in the church of san matteo between st mary major and st john latern when the french invaded rome in the year eighteen twelve they destroyed the church and the icon disappeared in the year eighteen sixty five it was rediscovered to the joy of many pope pius the ninth as a boy had prayed before the icon in the church of san mateo pius the ninth took great interest when the icon was finally rediscovered since he had been especially devoted to it he subsequently approved a liturgical feast in commemoration of the icon the devotion to our lady of perpetual help was spread in the church by the redemptorist priests as they revered the image for its profound spiritual meaning our lady of perpetual help is a very beautiful invocation since it expresses our lady's unflagging mercy towards us perpetual help means an assistance an act of mercy an act of uninterrupted piety that never ceases toward us the word never means that this assistance will not cease anywhere any time for any reason that is even if a person is in the worst possible situation situation our lady always will help one who prays to her tradition states that the icon memorializes an occasion in which the young christ awoke from a dream in which he saw the instruments of his passion the archangels michael and gabriel appeared to him and held before him the instruments of his future torture the cross the nails and the lance the little jesus in terror sought refuge in the arms of his mother in his haste the child nearly lost one of his sandals in the picture it is seen falling from his foot from the meaning of this picture we see that our lord himself went to mary our mother of perpetual help when he was in danger and in need the picture has a gold background these gold backgrounds were characteristics of paintings in the old eastern roman empire and during part of the middle ages the gold represents the glory of our lady as queen of heaven she has a halo around her head which is also gold as does the divine infant over the halo is a gold crown inlaid with precious stones the crowns of our lady and the christ child have similar shape the base of each sits close to the head has a thin rim and is topped with fabulous ornate designs on the rim are inlaid rubies on the ornate arches in the middle layer are sapphires and on the highest level is a row of emeralds or diamonds the crown of the child follows the exact same pattern our lady is wearing a deep blue mantle that covers her shoulders and head below the crown but over her forehead is a star made of precious stones to its left is a golden design and is either a cross or a star if you note carefully you see that our lady is wearing a red tunic under her blue mantle the red appears at her neck and ends at her sleeves this red tunic it closes at her neck with an exquisite band of diamonds the child jesus is seated on our lady's left arm he rests easily in her arms like a child who is used to being near his mother and enjoys being there there are two angels presenting the infant with some instruments of the passion at left an angel with a red tunic and green mantle shows him the lance and the gall at right the angel wearing a red tunic shows him the three-armed cross and the nails the features of our lady are very expressive the picture shows her in a very maternal attitude she is mother who holds the son with an extreme intimacy and remarkable affection it shows the familiarity of our lady with the god man at the same time she has a profoundly recollected gaze that transmits the respect and veneration she has for him she is praying to him while she holds him she is certain that she is holding god incarnate himself in her arms this picture is rich in symbolism the dark blue mantle represents motherhood while the red tunic symbolizes virginity therefore depicting her wearing both red and blue shows that she is both mother and virgin it's a delicate way to insinuate the miracle of her virginity before during and after the birth of our lord the two angels represent the passion that the child will have to face there is also a very picturesque detail it is the sandal hanging from the child's right foot by only one string it symbolizes the sinner who is still linked to our lord by one last string devotion to our lady
The Greek initials under the top, either side of the crown, stand for Mother of God. The initials over the angel at top left reads St. Michael the Archangel, at right St. Gabriel the Archangel. Under the angel at right are the Greek initials for Jesus Christ. The star on the veil of Our Lady indicates that she is the star of the sea, the guide in this life to lead us all who desire to the port of heaven. Even today, this is one of the most popular images of Our Lady, and it is one of the few images that is revered both in the Eastern and Western rites of the Church. Let us always ask Our Lady for her perpetual help and mercy. We should always remember, like the sandal in the picture, when all seems lost, we are still linked to our Lord through His Mother.